Hello, I'm Matthew Jarron, I'm Museum Curator at the University of Dundee and this is the first in what hopefully will be a series of little films uh, where I basically talk about certain things that we have in the University Museum collections. And we're going to kick off today by looking at an exquisitely delicate set of glass models that are in the Darcy Thompson Zoology Museum. These models were made by a father and son team, Leopold and Rudolf Blaschka, who were based in Dresden, Germany, uh, in the late 19th century. And um, the Blaschkas had been making glass for generations. So by the time Leopold took over the business, uh, it was already well established, uh, specialising in glass eyes. Uh, and Leopold also started to make various other scientific equipment. But he had a great love of natural history and in his spare time he started making models of plants and marine creatures. And this was really just a hobby, he wasn't expecting this to have any great commercial interest. But then the director of the Natural History Museum in Dresden saw these and thought this was exactly what he wanted for his museum because um, there was a great problem in how you displayed marine specimens in natural history museums. Um, you know, it was very relatively easy to have a stuffed bear or a you know skeleton of a giraffe or whatever in your museum. But if you wanted to show a jellyfish, for example, the only thing you could do was to basically stick it in a jar. Uh, and it didn't necessarily look very good. It's just a kind of floating blob. Uh, and, you know, for the public, it wasn't really, you know, it didn't really look like a jellyfish. Um, and so these glass models were a way of actually being able to show what marine specimens look like. Um, and have them beautifully intact and maintain all the colours and all the rest of it. So Blaschka started to supply these. Uh, his son then joined him in, in making them and they became hugely successful and other museums around the Western world started to hear about them and started to put in orders and it became really the predominant part of the Blaschka's business. And so in 1885, when Darcy Thompson got the job as uh, Professor of Biology at University College Dundee, uh, one of his first tasks was to build up a zoology museum, which was really what you needed in order to teach students at that time. And so he very quickly started building up specimens uh, and getting stuffed animals and skeletons and putting things in jars and so on and built up an ever larger collection. And very quickly he also realised that he needed to have models of the kinds of things that you couldn't you know, show the actual specimens very clearly. Um, and so he started to amass a collection of these. He uh, worked with various different model makers, both locally and indeed internationally. Um, and so we have some very lovely uh, models in the museum. So, for example, a lovely set of chicken embryo development um, and a number of models of tiny microscopic creatures, including uh, foraminifera and radiolaria, uh, creatures that Darcy was absolutely fascinated by. And all these were supplied by a, um, a maker in Prague called uh, Frick. And of course, undoubtedly, Darcy would have known of the Blaschka glass models and probably would have seen them in other museums. Uh, so it's no surprise that he quickly turned his attention to them as well. Um, and so in September 1888, he placed an order for about 70 models. And we know exactly what he ordered because the original order actually survives in the, the Blaschka archive. And uh, it's just a whole set of numbers, uh, but we can cross-reference those to the original Blaschka catalogue and work out exactly which models it was that Darcy was ordering. And as you'll see, uh, it comes to the rather princely sum of £350, which was a lot of money uh, back in 1888. And that certainly wasn't the money that Darcy had in his budget uh, because University College Dundee was always short of money, uh, nothing changes. Um, and so he needed to find some suitable uh, benefactors that would help to sponsor these. Um, and we know who those were as well because in uh, 1890, uh, in his, the annual report that he writes to the University College for the annual university calendar, uh, he reports that Mr John Robertson and Mr James Cunningham have, as he says, joined me in acquiring uh, an extensive set of Blaschka glass models. Uh, so it sounds like Darcy himself put some money in, but he also persuaded these two friends of his, Robertson and Cunningham, to do the same. Now, John Robertson was actually on the Board of Governors of University College. Um, he was quite prominent in local liberal politics and um, 
He was actually very well known as an art collector. He generally called himself John Robertson of Elms Lee because he lived in this very grand house, Elms Lee, which was absolutely stuffed full of all these wonderful paintings that he collected. And interestingly, uh, this house uh, has since been acquired by the university uh, back in 1949 and is now a university house where traditionally the university principal lives. Uh, James Cunningham uh, was also very active in local education. Uh, he was a partner in a duke business and uh, was also uh, became president of the Dundee Chamber of Commerce and uh, he and Darcy apparently shared a love of the classics. Uh, this is one of the other great things that Darcy was known for. He, he very much joined his love of natural history with his love of the classics and produced various books that, that sort of drew on both, both sets of, of knowledge. Um, so with the help of Robertson and Cunningham, uh, Darcy was able to buy this set of models. Now sadly, of the 70 odd models that Darcy ordered, uh, we only have about uh, 14, I think it is, today. And many of them only survive in somewhat fragmentary condition. And of course, this is the problem with glass models. They are very, very fragile. Uh, they break very easily. Uh, one can imagine that at various times over the years, one by one, they'll have got broken uh, and been disposed of. Um, Darcy's original museum, of course, was uh, demolished along with the other buildings that housed the original departments of the University College. Uh, they were all demolished in the late 1950s. Uh, a huge amount of Darcy's original collection was lost at that point. So it may well have been that, that those models that had survived up till that point uh, didn't survive beyond that. And I'm sure others, you know, were broken over the years since then. Uh, but the ones we have uh, are still incredibly beautiful and really delicate. Um, so they include uh, a jellyfish, uh, they include uh, models that show the, the um, embryonic development of a starfish, um, and they include models of polychaete worms as well. Um, and there's an interesting legacy to this collection because what Darcy's most famous for today, of course, is writing his book on growth and form, published in 1917, uh, which really lays the foundation of the science of mathematical biology. And for the first time, he was looking at the way that organisms grow and the different forms that they take, and trying to explain that using the laws of physics and mathematics. It was hugely controversial at the time, but it's gone on to have this extraordinary influence, not just in biology, but in many other uh, areas as well. And one of the things that Darcy does throughout the book is to compare organic and inorganic forms and to say, look, you know, we don't need to look for evolutionary answers into why certain animals have certain shapes because the physical forces that are shaping those organisms during their development will give rise to those particular shapes in the same way that they do to inorganic things like, you know, water drops and salt crystals and various other things. And uh, repeatedly he uses artistic analogies, again going back to his Darcy's interest in art. And so when he's talking about marine organisms, he very often compares them to the art of the glass blower. And so I think he's actually specifically thinking about these very models when he's writing these sections upon growth and form. He probably had them there on his desk in front of them. So it's rather lovely to think that these models that we have in the museum, um, which are, are all that survive of this obviously once much larger collection, uh, might have been the very things that he was thinking about when he was writing uh, that particular part of on growth and form. So next time you come to visit the Zoology Museum, do check out these incredibly beautiful models. Um, they're also, of course, searchable online. Just go to our online database uh, through our website, dundee.ac.uk slash museum, uh, and just search for Blaschka in Creator. But also we've had some amazing 3D scans done of our Blaschka models uh, created by um, uh, students on the medical art course at the university. And you can see those on our Sketchfab site, uh, sketchfab.com. Uh, and so you can actually go in and sort of zoom in and, and spin them around and do all sorts of wonderful things to really kind of try and understand the structure more. So uh, I hope you found that interesting. Do check out uh, what we've got. And next time you're able, come and visit the Zoology Museum. Bye for now.